Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we've got the usual suspects. We've got the nightcap OG, dude buddy, Scott Bossman. How are you? Great, hey, Mark. How are you? Good to see you. We've got your partner in crime, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing, the Zen master. He's wicked smart. Mike Zeno, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. Great to be here. Good to, good to see you. We've got the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Good to see you. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are things with you? I'm good. Living the uh, quarantined life. What does that even mean? It's no different. Other than my kids are home from school. Yeah, it's really no different for I like I still go to the like same place to, to work. I, I do the same thing and uh, yeah, it's all good. Yeah, as Mike Zeno would say, are you playing any more guitar? No. <laughs> no. Uh, and then of course, we've got, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are things with you? Things are going well, thank you. How about you? Very, very well, very well. Good. And last but not least, our flight school Sherpa, you know him, you love him. Scott Todd, scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. Before we get into our topic, I just want everybody to know that we have a, a new sponsor. That's the old sponsor. It's Flight School. Today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. If you want to learn more about how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life, go up the mountain of land investing with all people, Scott Todd being your Sherpa, then you owe it to yourself. You owe it to your family. You owe it to your community. Dang it. You owe it, you owe it to the world to learn more. Schedule a call with Mike Zane or Scott Bossman. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash training. See if this passive income niche is right for you. The next flight school is May 13th, May 13th. So it's coming up before you know it. Um, Scott Todd, you've got a really good topic. What's, what's our topic today? All right. So like, here's the deal. Um, we were contacted by someone who uh, saw some properties on Landmoto and said that the properties were being listed by a scam seller. Okay. And uh, the, the deal is we did some investigation and what we determined, it looks like what happened was the person was not a scam seller. It looks like what happened was the person had actually entered into an option agreement with a seller uh, that expired, expired back in December of 2019, but yet they were still listing properties for sale, even though they weren't the technical owner of the property, right? But they, they actually had a, an option to buy the property and that's what they were doing is they were listing a property that they had an option on, but the option had expired. So the seller was pretty upset um, that, that um, the, the actual owner, the, the land owner was pretty upset that, that the property was being listed on Landmoto when in fact somebody didn't even have a contract to, to buy it any longer. And, you know, it brought up the, the question or the thought process. One, you know, when I got the story of it, the, it, it kind of shocked me. It's kind of odd because I know that we talk about options, I don't like options. I don't do options like, you know, come on, buy the land. We're not talking about that much money. We are really not talking about that much money. Buy the land. Two, so I'm just curious, like, does anybody do options? Am I missing something? And then the follow-up to that is, is it legit? Like, should you keep marketing a property even though you don't have, have it after the option expires? Like, what, what's your take on it? I feel like we should start with the irascible Eric Peterson, who's probably going to have really strong opinions about this. Eric, again, Please don't curse, but let us know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep it clean. Um, so first of all, the, the end of that question about, you know, is it right to market a property that you don't own or you don't have an option agreement on? Absolutely not. Um, I think that that ad, you know, if it was placed while the um, option was valid, you know, that's okay, but it should have come down right at the end of that because obviously at that point, they no longer have the right to, to sell that property or technically buy it and then sell it. 
Um, you know, in terms of option agreements, it is something we teach. I think it's something that's somewhat rarely utilized. Um, I have utilized them in the past. Um, typically when I'm doing that, it's for a um, more expensive property that I might not want to put all the capital out on right away. Sometimes it's been a, um, maybe a property that I'm not super familiar with and an area I'm not super familiar with and it's also very expensive and I'm just not willing to put that cash on the line without knowing if I could sell that property. But generally speaking, um, if the property is in an area that I work in um, and you know, it's the, the standard kind of stuff I'm used to, I'm not out there looking for option agreements. I, I do understand why maybe some people getting started might try to utilize that strategy, but I think you have to be extremely careful with it and you need to be very forthright with your potential buyers and also with your seller um, because here you're acting as an intermediary, intermediary and um, you know, you've got to buy that property in order to sell it. So um, there's a lot of kind of finesse that has to happen in a deal like that. No, I, I think that's a great answer. You know, it's, it's interesting. Like I haven't talked about options. I haven't thought about options in years. And what's really for, for us that's replaced the option is land arbitration or not arbitration. I'm sorry. Land, land arbitrage. I don't know why I'm thinking about arbitration. They have a, you know why? Cause I had a call with my attorney yesterday. So land arbitrage um, is, is sort of, if you, if you're limited on capital, that solves that problem because you can control the property for a hundred bucks and then you sell it with a higher down payment, let's say 200 bucks and your term might be hundred bucks a month and you sell it for 200 bucks a month and you're making the difference of a hundred bucks a month only putting in a hundred dollars, which is like an option. So what do you think of that Eric Peterson? Well, I, I love land arb. I, I think it's a great strategy. I think that um, it can definitely work well. It's in the scenario that, that I was talking about with an option agreement. I don't think it really applies because chances are you're not going to do a land arb deal with the current owner of the property if they're not a land investor. But if you're looking for a way to get started in this business and you're not maybe actively mailing or um, maybe you just, you want to kind of test a market or something, um, spend a little bit of capital to, to control a property, then yes, land art makes a lot of sense and is an excellent strategy. All right. Well, great. Well, you know, let's go to a cooler head than Eric's. Mike Zeno, um, what are your thoughts? Definitely not a cooler head than Eric's first thought. <laughs> um, well, I look at it from where maybe I would have used an option. Well, I work in a host, I do a lot of wholesale, right? So if I'm talking to you, Mark, and it's like, geez, you know, we're, we're negotiating a price. And I'm like, ah, you know, Mark, I don't know, but let me do this. Could we get an option on this? Could I, you know, secure this for you for maybe 30, 60 days? I work with a uh, large pool of investors. Let me see if any of them are interested. And if so, uh, you know, we could, we could work together. Then I wouldn't advertise it um, typically in the sense of, I mean, I could do this actually if it wasn't even, uh, you know, I could just be talking to you, Mark. Listen, let me see. I have some other investors, see if they'd be interested. Let me get back to you. I don't have to have an official option, but I'm not going to list it on Land Moto, but I may go to a pool of buyers that I know very, uh, I know very well. I've done lots of deals with them and say, hey guys, I got this property here. Are you interested? And uh, if they are interested, then great. I, I know that uh, I could close and, and uh, make, the, make, the, make the deal, the wholesale deal. Um, or I could go back in 30 days and say, Mark, I've reached out to all my investors. So it could be like a, a tactic, right? So maybe you don't do anything. Maybe just option it and just uh, for a dollar or something in 30 days. Geez, Mark, I reached out to all the people I work with. No one's touching at that price. So unfortunately, I can't work with you. But if you're interested in, in being a little bit more flexible with your pricing, maybe maybe I could work with you and, and maybe I'll get a better deal. So, I mean, I see some use of it. I don't do it a lot, but I see where it could be utilized. Okay, would you think it's it's just wrong after that option expires to keep it listed on a platform like Landmoto? Yeah, I wouldn't do that. No, no. I, I mean, I may say, geez, I, you and I might be talking. Now you're on the other side. You're one of the people that buys from me and be like, you know, I wish I had a property in Costilla, right? And I'd be like, you know what? 
I had one, you know, Mark, I might be able to get you something, you know, and that's already expired, but I'll go back and re rekindle the deal, but not going to advertise it on a platform. No, not myself. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, let's talk to the most feared woman in the country. Mimi Schmidt. So no, I, w I would definitely not be advertising a property after an option has expired. I don't use options. I don't use them at all. Uh, I do market properties that I don't own though, but I do it, it, it kind of, I pre-sell them, right? So if I already have an agreement that I'm buying the property and it's already gone to closing, my VA is creating the paperwork, then I see no, nothing wrong with my, another VA creating the marketing materials and us getting those, that, those properties up on the marketing platforms and actually looking to sell them before, it, you know, it, how many weeks does it take for somebody to return the paperwork after you send it out, have it created and send it out? One, two, a month. Right. So I could be marketing properties that I don't own as they're closing. So I do it that, but I, um, I don't option pop properties per se. So. Okay. I mean, has, has a potential buyer ever come back to you and be like, Hey Mimi, I went to the County and you don't own this property. What gives? I tell them it's in my pipeline. Tell that the paperwork's basically out for signing and it's just a matter of time. And that a lot of times these counties run behind, you know, some of these counties websites run nine months behind on their information. So there are properties that I actually do own that people call the county and say, it looks like you don't own it. And I can say, yes, I do. The county's data is just not up to date. Does it ever happen, that scenario? No. No. The ones that I own, yes, on counties that don't update their data, but me pre-selling properties, no. Wow, I'm, I'm kind of shocked. Weeks. That's great. That's great. Um, let's talk to uh, the nightcap OG, sober as always, Scott Bossman. As always, yes. Uh, I currently do not use option agreements. Uh, I did employ the strategy early on. Uh, in the first year of the business, I did do a couple options. Uh, one, nothing became of it. I think I paid the lady $50 uh, and we had a 90 day option. I uh, just decided that I didn't want that property in the end. The other deal was similar to what Eric said. Uh, when I was first starting, I didn't have the capital to buy this more expensive property. So I was just forthcoming with the seller and said, you know, listen, if, uh, oh, Andy had back taxes. So, so listen, uh, I don't want to invest all my money in this deal right now, but if you're okay with it, uh, I'll try to market the property uh, and and try to find a buyer for you. And I and I did find a buyer, but I was very very forthcoming with that. To me, I don't know the the option agreement. Uh, it it could be a little shady to a seller, so I just make sure I'm very forthcoming, tell them exactly what I'm doing. Uh, I don't utilize that that strategy anymore. Um, you know, as, as I've mentioned before, five years ago, we didn't talk about land arbitration as much. We didn't talk about selling notes as much. Uh, so there's ways to move forward in the business with, um, you know, uh, ways to work, ways to make your money work for you. Uh, as far as the second part of the question goes, no, absolutely not. I would not, uh, I would not be posting a property on a public platform that uh, I do not own, uh, making it appear that I own it. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Big Papa. Yeah. I mean, posting a property that you don't have the rights to sell, that's sleazy. That's what just, about, I do, mean, you, do you like options though? Would you do an option? You know, I, I don't. I've, I'll be honest. I've never done an option because I either believe in the property enough to either buy it or I'm not going to touch it. So it's either one or the other. And I trust my due diligence. I trust my county research, my ability to conduct that. And if the numbers make sense, you got to buy it, right? There's no reason not to buy it. And, you know, that's just me personally. Um, I can see where it might be a good, uh, you know, avenue to take if you're buying an expensive property, but I don't buy expensive properties. So most of my properties are under $2,000. And so I can typically just write a check and buy it and take full possession of it and, um, that's my preferred method, but selling something you don't own or have the rights to sell, that's, 
not okay. And that, that gives us a bad name, right? Then it takes one person to have that experience. And then they assume that all land sellers are kind of acting in a gray area, marketing stuff that they shouldn't, et cetera. So um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the option. And I, I don't, uh, here's the other reason why I don't love it is for me personally, it's hard to get super motivated to sell a property that I've got an option on for $25, right? If I'm going to sell something, I need to have some skin in the game, right? I need to have a commitment and I'm motivated by that thought of wasting money. If I sign up for a program, I'm going to get every single dollar out of it every single month, like Zapier's, right? I'm using every single Zap that I pay for, regardless of if I need them, right? Because I'm cheap like that. So for me, if I'm spending money on something, it needs to be a lot of money to, in order to kind of really get me to take the action necessary to, to get the end result I want. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and, you know, we haven't really brought it up, but even on a bulk deal, I'd rather do a takedown deal contractually where I'm going to say every, every month I'm going to buy these two lots at this strike price. And then that kind of mitigates my risk as well because of the market changes. I'm only into it for those two lots per month and I can get out of it as opposed to an option. So Scott Todd, how do you like those answers? what do you think? Well, I mean, I, I, I like the answers. I mean, you know, I, I'm the same way. Like I, when I got going, I tried the option once, like literally once. And I fumbled through the explanation because I said to the guy, well, look, I can't buy it, but why don't I option? He's like, well, what's that? And I'm like, oh, well, you know, you give me the right to buy the property within the next 90 days and I'll give you a, a, you know, a token amount. To the, it was so, I didn't have my wording right. The guy's like, well, just send me the paperwork. I never heard from the guy. And I'm like, this is just too much. I'm either going to buy it or I'm not going to buy it. Uh, and so when I mail, like literally when I mail, then I, I actually close. And sometimes like that is, that has been a key conversation to people when they'll call me and they'll say, well, you know, I got an offer uh, from this other guy for $3,000 and your offer's 2,300. Why don't, why would I accept yours? And I'm like, because I have the money and I will buy the property period in the story. The other guy doesn't have any money and he's not going to buy the property. Like that's the difference. I'm going to close. And I've actually had people turn around and say, no, I'm going to take the $3,000 out. And I've literally seen people go onto the Facebook group and say, Hey, I got this property. Uh, I got it listed for 3000, you know, but I don't have $3,000. Anybody want to buy it for me for 350, you know, 3,500 or, and I'm like, the guy doesn't have any money. And so, of course, I'm not pitching in to help. I want him to, in that case where he stole a deal from me, I want him to feel the pain because, like, you're either going to show up and get the deal done or not. But if you don't, if you can't do it, well, then don't, don't tell someone, in my opinion, don't tell someone, oh, I'm going to try to do it in six months, and then you shop in the market. Because I think, and, and then leave it up on a website. Like, take it down. Because I think that you're, you're making bad um uh, you're giving, you're giving other land sellers a bad rep, like close on it, get it done, be an action taker, be an executor, be a deal maker and close, buy the properties or go to land arm. Tate? Yeah, no, that's well put. I, I was completely agreeing with that. We close deals fast. We close them frequently. And uh, I hate it when people, you know, offer more than us and then, strings string a seller along i mean it's just do the deal if you're going to do it yeah mimi completely agree zen master yeah i think we just crossed over into a new subject with some great insight um from what scott was saying i mean this is if someone says geez i gotta because a lot of times you know people might say that just to kind of rattle you and see if you'll come up in your price like oh i got this other you know it's like great you know but in our experience you know you probably end up signing with them, and then after a little bit, they'll uh, they'll try to negotiate with you. And I, all I can say is that every dollar that we offered you is every dollar you're going to get. You know, this is you know, and so I think we kind of crossed over to a new subject now with some great insight. But I agree. Yeah, that, that could be that could be a new uh, roundtable topic as well. It's just mm -hmm. closing with a seller when they have multiple offers. Eric, final words. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, you know, don't be a 
sleazy land seller. Don't go out and list property that uh, you don't have the right to sell. Yeah. Scott Bossman, final word. No, I think we're all on the same page. Um, we don't want to be portrayed as, as sleazy or have people think of us in that way at all. Um, and I think some people do. Uh, and um, so any, any chance we can get to negate that stigma is a good thing. Uh, you know, I, we, we hear all the time from people that we interact with, well, you're just a sleazy land seller. Well, no, I'm not. I mean, I'm selling it to you for, you know, market value. I've made this property become available. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of interesting. So, so yeah, I think uh, reputation is, is key and we need to, we need to keep that in mind. Yeah. I mean, if anybody ever called me a sleazy land seller, I'd just call them Carol Baskin. Right. Ooh. And I'd be like, like look, right. no, not at all. I'm, I'm providing value here. Um, but, you know, to put it all full circle from last week's round table about the Tiger King, you know, it does sound like that seller, Scott Todd, by listing property they don't own after the expiration date, it was a, they're like land exotic. And then the person whistleblowing is their, their Carol Baskin. Is it not? Uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> is it, is it a fair comparison? Uh, it, it could be, but uh, you know, like, did the whistleblower uh, feed their husband to the tigers? <laughs> like, isn't that what makes Carol Baskin, Carol Baskin, supposedly she fed the, you know, you get it. It's all supposedly hypothetical. Yeah, I haven't seen the bonus episode yet. I know you did. Is it is it worth watching? Oh, yeah. Uh, it was, it, look, it was good. good. Uh, I don't, I just don't know that you can you can get away from the nuttiness, right? Like, sadly, they didn't have Carol on there. But but because I live in Tampa, you know, where the big cat rescue is, uh, the news did an interview with Carol and her husband. I'm trying to find it on their website now uh, that I can share with you guys because uh, she is highly offended. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, like, um, if, you, if you want some more entertainment bonus, free bonus episodes, go to the big cat rescues YouTube page where she's posting the daily, where she does the daily video with the high cool cats and kittens, that kind of a deal. Cause she really does do that. Right. Like that's a real deal. And then in the comments, people are lighting her up. She, you can tell, you can tell she's the one responding. Like I can read, like you can read it and she's responding and, you know, like, obviously she's deleting. Someone's like, why was I banned from your Facebook page by simply asking what was different between you and Joe Exotic, uh, zoos, I, uh, and she's going through there explaining it. Like, it's good reading, man. Like, the, the, I don't watch the videos. I just read the comments. Like, isn't that the new face for everything? I just, just read the comments. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, you know what else is, is fantastic? A Mimi Schmidt tip of the week. So, Mimi... What is your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go improve their businesses, improve their lives? What do you got? This website, it's to smallbusinessassociation.gov, and it's about the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program, EIDL. It gives directions and uh, information on the application. So what is this loan? It's a loan for small businesses that have been affected by COVID-19. Uh, you get you can get a ten thousand dollar advance. I know land sellers that have already gotten the ten thousand dollar advance. Um, interest rates three point seven five percent, and you don't have to start paying on it until a year from now. So, if you need some funds, the government's offering them. This is a great tip. Wow! Now I just did my uh, PPP application with my bank, but this is this is something different, correct? Yes, the PPP is apparently a little harder to get. Yeah, this is this is cool. Um, great tip, fantastic. Um, well, I want to thank the listeners and just remind them the only way that I can get these, you know, cool cats and kittens to come back on the roundtable every every week is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 
Passive Income Launch Kit course, as well as the latest $2.2 million wholetailing course. Absolutely free. And I am trying to get Scott Bossman to get a Joe Exotic mullet going, and we could get the, the meme for Scott Bossman Land Exotic. Yes. But oh, the only way we're going to do that is if you send us the screenshot of your review uh, on the podcast. Otherwise, Scott's not going to do it. I got a great start, man. My hair is probably the longest it's been in 20 years. So I'll just challenge accepted. Yeah, no, my, my, my hair is so thick. Like I felt like Marge Simpson last night. Like I, I'm like pulling like things out of it. I'm like, where did this corn on the, on the cob come from? Like, oh, it's insane. It's insane. Um, so, uh, well, thanks, guys. And uh, are we ready to do this? One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, 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 freedom reign. reign. Not bad. And wash your hands. Okay, got Mark. Mark. Listen, I, I got it right here. Here's what we got to do. Maybe we need to do... Uh, a, a, a spoof of the Tiger King, maybe call it like the Land King or something, or yeah. Scott Boston can be Land Exotic. Mimi could be Carol Baskin. Right? <laughs> Aaron, Aaron could be Jeff Lowe. He could just get his hat. Okay. <laughs> Tate, Tate could be the, the stoner dude uh, who was the zoo manager, right? Like, the one, oh, the one yeah. who smokes while he fills up gas tanks. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I like it. Uh, uh, let's see, we got Zano. I don't know who Zano, myself, or you could be. Uh, Zano could be the 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 uh, documentary host. <laughs> you no, know, you know, Zano could be Bhagavan because he's got that yeah. whole Zen thing going. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Doc you, Anno. You could be uh, you could be the Kirk Kirkham guy. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> You you could be uh, Scott the... Ty could be Howard. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Scott Todd, are you gonna let are you gonna let that slide? No, no, Scott Boston, I'm coming after you. I could be Don Lewis. The you, heard, you all heard it. You all heard he's coming after me. You all heard yeah. it on this podcast. Wow. Wow. I mean, Mark, that is the that is the come after you that you experienced the other day, isn't it? Yeah, you know, Bossman's kind of quiet. Like, but when he cuts, he cuts yeah. deep. He's yeah. he's like that guy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I think, wow. I think, that's that's a lot of pent up rage right there. I can now see why Land Exotic ends up in prison. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I mean. <laughs> Scott Talk could actually be at your doorstep, Scott Bossman, because he just has to get in the plane. That's right. I know. You all know what will happen. You all know why I disappear when I do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Scott, don't don't you think Zeno should come to your defense a little quicker, though, considering he's your your nightcap, you know, co-worker? You know why I didn't, A little didn't, bad, bad blood lately. I don't know. You, you know why I didn't, Mark? Because I'm still in shock from the most – the probably the most severe words I've heard Eric Peterson ever say on here. Don't be a sleazy landowner. Like it, it I don't know. I'm still, he it was pretty harsh back then. That, that's taken me probably off focus for the rest of the call. <laughs> I've never heard him say such harsh words. Oh, I, yeah, I hear it. Like I'll Vox him like, Eric, you want to do a Facebook live? And man, <laughs> like I can't repeat what he says. And then eventually it's like, okay, I'll do it for the community. But like, it is. Wow. It, it's like I hope my kids Ridiculous. are listening to this. You know, <laughs> hmm. Eric, we're joking, obviously. Eric's not but, like that at all. Scott Todd, how far are you away from going to get a picture with Carol Baskin? Can't you just go up there and get a little selfie? Uh, okay, so look, I'm pro. I could be there in about thirty, thirty-five minutes or so. I could be there. Um, how are you resisting? Yeah, what's taking so long? Well, well, okay. So for so first, uh, I'm not sure that I want to support support her uh, mission there. But second, 
she did say in one of the videos, one of the videos I watched, she did say that they have uh, installed security cameras at the front gate because all these people want to go and and like take pictures of the gate now that it's so famous. So I could go take a picture and say hi to Carol. I mean, that that's doable. Yeah, you know? a picture of you I, in front of the gate, that works. Yeah. yeah, that works. I think that's what you need to do for your drive today, Scott. <laughs> I don't know about that, but... Who knows? Facebook I mean, Live. <laughs> do you think Hurt Hurt Howard can sue um, the that the Netflix creators for like literally like you've turned the entire world against us while we're in quarantine? I mean, the, here's the reality, right? The the reality is is that um, did like. Did they misrepresent, right? Like you can always say, well, okay, well, they, you know, they, they didn't edit it correctly, whatever, but all they did was present, present information of what people said. They, they, she even talked about it, right? Like they didn't do anything and you can't, you can't control how people are going to perceive you in that, like the, the directors or the producers, they couldn't control how the people would perceive Carol and her husband, you know, like, they, they didn't, unless they, I don't know, even if they lied about it, it's just not true. I don't know that they could do that, right? Like they participated in a show. I'm sure they signed all kinds of releases and everything. So, you know, I, the people just don't like her. Like that's the problem is that they just don't like her. And, it, you know, w whether it has to do around uh, whether or not she supposedly killed her husband or not, who knows? They just don't like her. And you can't fix I'm sorry. That. Scott, did you say like her or liger? Like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I think we got to end on that note. That's like that's a drop the my the drop the moment uh, pun right there. Thank you, Tate. Thank you. Well, thanks everybody. Thanks, dear listener, and uh, all you cool cats and kittens out there. Stay safe. Wash your hands, and. Um, Hopefully we'll be back to normal, some sort of normalcy very soon. But, um, you know, we're all, we're all in this together. And um, if you ever do need a little lift, I, I've been loving John Krasinski on YouTube, SGN, some good news. Um, just phenomenal. Just phenomenal. So thanks, everybody.